Hello everyone, a very good morning to all. So this is the second video on the elements of lanthanide compounds. So we were discussing the properties of lanthanide elements. And in this video, we'll be discussing about magnetic properties of lanthanide elements. So why do we study magnetic properties? Actually, by studying the magnetic properties, we can know the presence of paired or unpaired electrons in any compound. If all the electrons are paired, the compound is going to be diamagnetic and it will be weakly repelled by the magnetic field. And if one or more electrons are unpaired, that means if a single electron is present, which is uh, only one electron is unpaired uh, or one or more electrons are unpaired, then the compound is going to be paramagnetic and it will be attracted by the magnetic field. So we can <coughs> measure the diamagnetism or paramagnetism experimentally also and also we can calculate it using the calculation method which we'll be discussing so uh, in the paramagnetic compounds if we see that if two electrons are unpaired and or we can say one electron is unpaired and rest all the electrons are paired then why not it why cannot it behave as diamagnetic because more the uh, more number of electrons are paired in that compound this is because the repulsion due to paired electrons is very much less the magnitude of repulsion is very 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 less in comparison to attraction due to single unpaired electron so that is why if uh, even if one electron is there which is unpaired then the compound is going to behave as paramagnetic that is, that is it will be attracted by the magnetic field so most of the lanthanide compounds, the most of the lanthanide compounds in which lanthanide ions are present, uh, except for lanthanum 3 plus, lutetium 3 plus, cerium 4 plus, and ytterbium 2 plus are paramagnetic. Only these four ions are diamagnetic in nature. Rest all the lanthanide ions are paramagnetic in nature. So magnetism is measured in terms of magnetic moment. How do we measure magnetism? It is measured in terms of magnetic moment. More the number of unpaired electrons, more is going to be the magnetic moment and more is going to be the paramagnetic character and more is going to be the attraction. So if we calculate the value of magnetic moment, we can know how much attraction is there, how much paramagnetic character is there in that particular compound. Magnetic behavior is thus measured in terms of magnetic moment. So magnetic behavior, uh, magnetic moment is of two types in any compound which is of two types, spin magnetic moment and orbital magnetic moment. Spin magnetic moment arises due to spinning motion of the electron. As we all know that electron is exhibiting two types of motion when it is uh, revolving around the nucleus, it is having two types of motion. It is having, it is spinning around its own axis and it is orbiting around the nucleus. So the spinning motion gives rise to spin magnetic moment and orbital motion gives rise to orbital magnetic moment. So in case of lanthanides, the magnetic moment is due to the contribution of both spin and orbital magnetic moment, unlike d block elements. In case of d block elements, spin only values are there. In case of d block elements, why orbital magnetic moment is not there? This is because the d block elements are not well shielded like F block elements from the outer environment and ligand environment. Does the electric field of the ligand field and outer environment restricts the orbital motion to a considerable extent that uh, there uh, does a, their uh, ligand uh, sorry orbital magnetic moment doesn't exist for d block elements or there is minimal orbital magnetic moment. So we consider only spin only values for the case of d block element, but for the case of F block elements, that is uh, particularly lanthanides, what we have is we have the uh, into the uh, into magnetic moment, we have the contribution of both spin magnetic moment and orbital magnetic moment because F block elements, in case of F block elements, the electrons are the outermost shell, the F shell is well shielded from the outer atmosphere and ligand environment. So, how do we calculate magnetic moment? For, case, for the case of lanthanides. Uh, this is a symbol of magnetic moment and the units are Bohr magnetum. This is, this is called as mu. This is the symbol of magnetic moment. This is the formula for magnetic moment that is under root of 4s multiplied by s plus 1 plus L into n plus 1. 
here s is the total spin quantum number and l is the total orbital magnetic quantum number so <coughs> about the s and <coughs> l value we'll uh, will take one problem then we'll it will be very much clear that how do we calculate the value of total spin quantum number that is s and how do we calculate total orbital magnetic quantum number so this formula was initially Used and later on it was found that this formula was valid for only these electronic configuration that is f zero f seven and f fourteen that is zero f electrons for exactly half filled configuration for exactly fully filled f subshell because of the coupling of spin and orbital uh, contribution because there uh, for other electronic configuration there was need to consider a new Orbital cont uh, new contribution new new quantum number that is j, whose value was j is equal to l minus s that is orbital total orbital magnetic quantum number minus spin total spin quantum number when the orbital is less than half filled. So if the orbital that is f subshell is less than half filled, then j value is l minus s, and if f subshell is more than half filled, that is more than more than Seven electrons are seven in F subshell. Then the value of J is L plus S. And in that case, mu is going to be that is magnetic moment is going to be G multiplied by root of J into J plus one. Now what is G here? G is Landy splitting factor, whose value can be calculated. The value of which can be calculated using this formula that is one plus J into J plus one plus S into S plus one minus L into L plus one divided by two J into J plus one. So this is how we calculate magnetic moment. Let us take one problem here. The values were found to be uh, so the uh, the uh, using these formulas the calculation of magnetic moment was done and also as I have mentioned earlier that we can also calculate the magnetic moment experimentally. So the values were found. The values obtained using these formulas are found in close agreement with experimentally measured values. So let us calculate the magnetic moment for the dolium three plus. Its electronic configuration is <coughs> zero, four f seven. So there are seven unpaired electrons in the f subshell. So uh, first, we'll uh, as this is. Uh, exactly half the electronic configuration. So we'll use this formula: mu is equal to four into four s plus four s into s plus one plus l into l plus one. So for s value, as all the electrons are singly, uh, these are not paired. Uh, all the orbitals are singly occupied. So spin is going to be plus half for all. So total spin quantum number is half into seven, as there are seven electrons. So its value is three point five, and for the value of l. Will take uh, as we know the value of magnetic quantum number varies from plus three to minus three. So here L value is going to be plus three plus two. Uh, for all the electrons, we'll take these values. That is plus three plus two plus one plus zero minus one minus two minus three. So there are seven electrons in these orbitals. So overall L comes out to be zero. So From here, we can calculate the value of mu by putting these two values in this formula. So it comes out to be under root of six to three, that is seven point nine over magnetron. So this value was in complete agreement with the experimentally calculated values. Let us take another case where there are more than or less than seven electrons are present in F subshell. Here we have taken the case of this prosmium, which is dy three plus. Here the electronic configuration is 4f9. So there are nine electrons in f subshell. So this is the this is how we fill this f subshell. So formula which is good, which we are going to use here is g into j into j. So first we'll calculate g. Uh, first we'll calculate j. And as we know, as I have mentioned earlier, that if it's more than half filled, then the j value is going to be l plus s, and l value is going to be Three into two electrons plus two into two plus one zero plus zero minus one minus two minus two. So these all will be added, and the value comes out to be five. And spin comes out to be for these two 
orbitals of spin is going to be cancelled out as these are paired. So there are five unpaired electrons. So spin <coughs> quantum number is going to be five into half. That is two point five. So for uh, from here, J value is going to be seven point five. That is L plus S. Further, we'll calculate the value of G, and it comes out to be one point three three. And now we'll calculate the value of magnetic moment by putting the value of G and J both. So here it comes out to be ten point six two. So using these formula, both the formulas for F for the special configuration that is F zero, F seven, and F fourteen, and for for the other electronic configuration for F, we have calculated the magnetic moment of all the tri-positive lanthanides, and the magnetic moment exhibits this type of graph. That is when the uh, orbital is less than half tail. The magnetic moment values are very less in comparison to the uh, elements which have uh, their electronic configuration was more than half tail. That is more than seven electrons are present in four f subshell. This was because here this orbital contribution, uh, this spin contribution is getting subtracted from the orbital contribution of the magnetic moment, and here. Both the contributions are getting added up. So this was here. Uh, these theoretical results, the, those uh, the values which we calculated from <coughs> using these formulas were found to be in complete agreement with experimental results. So this is why the shape of the graph is like this. So this is an important graph. As here we can clearly see that there is a huge difference in the values of magnetic moment for uh, the elements with 4f subshell where 4f subshell is less than half filled and 4f subshell where uh, where 4f subshell is more than half filled so this is why there is a difference that because there is for less than half filled there is subtraction and for more than half filled there is addition of orbital and spin magnetic moment so next we are going to do the ionic radii and lanthanide contraction that will be take up taking up in next video